In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the true artist Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open your photo and you just play the action and here's the fact that the action creates. So as you can see what the action does, the action transforms the photo into a very realistic oil painting effect. Right? And the results that you get are fully layered, so there is a lot of options for customizing the results once the action is finished. And the action includes uh, 20 unique uh, hand-painted textures that you can use. And the action will create uh, the painting effect based on the painting texture that you choose. And the action will also create even 30 percent coral looks that you can choose from. All right. So let me just close this window. So in your proper photo, before you start using the action, there are just a few things you should check just to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is a background layer. So it should be called the background and have this little lock icon. And if you have anything else, just go to layer, new, and choose a background from layer. Then click on this menu icon over here and choose panel options. And just make sure that this option here, the add copy to copy layers groups is checked. Then go to the image mode and make sure your photo is the RGB color mode 8-bit kernel. You can also check the image size from here. So for best results, you should use the images that run from 20, 25 to 40, 45, uh, 100 pixels wide or high. All right? And we need to check just one more thing. So just select the R history burst tool from here and just make sure that you have the settings like here. All right. Now to load the action, go to Window, Actions. Click on the menu over here, Load Actions, and just choose the action from a folder according to a Photoshop version. You open the folder, select the action file, just choose Load, and the action will appear in your Actions panel. All right. To load the brushes, you can just hit B on your keyboard, right click anywhere inside the canvas, click on the gear icon, Load Brushes, and again just choose the brush from a folder according to a Photoshop version. And there is one brush will appear here in the brushes panel. And then just select the pattern stop tool from here. Click on this arrow here, gear icon, load patterns. And again, just choose the pattern file from the uh, folder according to the Photoshop version. You select the patterns file, choose load. And 20 patterns will be loaded here in your patterns panel. So all you have to do now is to just select the true artist action inside the folder and click play. and the action will stop a few times asking you to do some quick things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten the video and I'm going to get back uh, when each message shows. All right, so here we got the first message and it says, in the next pop-up window, adjust the stroke size value as you like. Keep in mind that lower values give more photo details. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue. Now here what you can do is you can zoom out to better see your photo. And what you need to do is to adjust this stroke size. So if you want more details in your photo to be visible, then just use some of the lower values. All right. And all you have to do after you adjust the stroke size to just choose OK, the action will continue to work. So I'm again going to fasten the video and get back when the next message shows. All right, so here we got the next message. And it says, now in the next pop-up window, choose the painting pattern that you like. Then adjust the scale, position the pattern as you like, and choose OK. Click Continue to proceed. So choose Continue here. And now you can just choose the pattern, the painting uh, variation that you like. Right, so there are 10 uh, landscape oriented patterns and there are 10 portrait oriented uh, patterns. So you can use any of those, no matter how photo is oriented. And all these patterns are made uh, seamless. So what you can do is, after you select the pattern that you like, you can here drop down the opacity to see how these uh, brush strokes are suiting your, uh, your photo. And what you can do is you can just click anywhere here inside the canvas and move around this texture however you like. All right. 
as you like. And after you finish with that, just return the opacity to 100%. And what you can also do is you can change the scale here. Right, so you can use, if you need smaller uh, brush strokes, you can just lower the scale value here. Or if you need larger um, brush strokes, just increase the scale here, all right? So I'm going to set it like this. And once again, you can drop down the opacity to see how it looks how it goes with your photo, and after you finish, just return the opacity to 100. So after you make all the settings here, all you have to do is to just choose OK. The action will continue to work, so I'm passing the video uh, once more, and I'll get back when the next message shows. All right, so here we got a last message, and it says, in the next mobile window, save your file as the PSD file. File name and location are not important. Just keep in mind that you will have to select this file in the next step. Choose continue as the proceed. So choose continue here. And as it sends a message, you can uh, name the file however you like and just save it on uh, wherever you want. Just keep in mind that you will have to select uh, this file in the very next step. All right, so I'm just gonna name it texture and choose save. And here's the next message. It says, now in the next pop-up window, set the following settings for displace filter. You got a horizontal scale five, vertical scale five, displacement map, stretch the fit, and undefined areas, repeat edge pixels. Then choose OK and select the PSD file that you have previously saved. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue. You set this to five and make other settings as shown here. Choose OK. And now just select that PSD file that you just saved. Choose open and and choose open. The action will continue to work. So this was the last message, and I'm going to fasten the video here again and get back when the action is finished. And then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how can you customize the results that you get. All right. So the action has just finished. So I'm just going to close the action panel for now, and I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel. So the first thing you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how can you quickly do that? Is to just hold Control and Alt buttons for PC or command option for a Mac, and while the true artist folder is selected, just click on this arrow here. And in this way, you're going to close down all the folders. So I'm going to start customizing these effects from the bottom. And the first layer that we got here is the painting layer, and this is the uh, base effect uh, of the painting. So what you can do here is you can, uh, if you open the filters here, you see that these layer has the displace filter and so this layer will be displaced using the displacement map based on the texture that you've chosen and what you can do is you can double click here and use other settings if you want you know, we can turn it off if you like all right i'm just going to leave it default and the next layer we got here is the reveal original photo layer it says here brush white into mask so what you need to do if you wish to reveal original photo in any areas is to just select this layer mask. You pick a brush tool, you can just hit B in your keyboard, right click anywhere, set the canvas, pick a soft brush, and just set for one color to white. You can change the size of the brush using the square brackets in the keyboard. And simply click wherever you wish to reveal your original photo. All right, just like this. So just gonna quickly reveal some details here. And if you wish to remove some data that you just revealed, you can just brush with the black color. So for example, reveal details here. And 
and just brush with the black color and remove the details you've just revealed. All right. And then what you can do is you can just change down the opacity here of this layer. So to change opacity of any layer, you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside, or you can click on this little arrow here and then just move this slider left to right. Okay. So I'm going to adjust it like this. And what you can also do, if you wish to reveal a original photo over the whole canvas, all right, you can just open the properties panel and you can just drop down the density. And as you start dropping down the density, you start revealing your original photo all over the canvas. All right, I'm just going to leave it default. Okay, so the next layer that we got is the reveal photo details. So this layer is not just going to reveal the original photo, but more the details and the edges of the original photo. Okay. So I'm just going to increase it a little bit. Just like this. Okay. And the next we got here is the painting textures folder. So just gonna open the folder and you find two layers here. All right, so this is the main textures layer and this one here is gonna reveal uh, the texture on a very highlighted area, for example, like here. So if it happens that this layer is not visible on a very bright area or a uh, pure white area, this layer will be visible. The area, so you can then just adjust its opacity all right, and now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust the opacity of this main texture layer. So I'm going to increase it a little bit, just like this. And what you can also do is you can select this layer mask, you can pick a brush tool, uh, pick a salt brush, set for color to black, and you can just brush wherever you wish to remove some specific brush stroke, all right? And if you hide this layer, you see that you still have these visible lines. That's the lines that are created by these two uh, layers. So what you can do, you can hide them and then better see how the texture look. And if you wish to make any changes to it, so I'm just gonna remove the texture, these areas here. All right. That's it. So I'm just going to turn these layers on. And you can also use these main layer mask if you wish to remove, it, if you wish to remove both of these layers uh, in any area. All right. So next what we got here are the shadows and highlights. So I'm just going to open the folder. So this layer is going to add the highlights to the painting and this one's gonna add shadows. So I'm just gonna hide them and turn the highlights for now. So when you double click on this layer, what you can do is you can move this slider to determine how much highlights you wish to reveal. So as you're increasing this range, more highlights are going to start appearing. All right, so I'm going to just like this, choose okay. And what you can also do is you can change the opacity of this layer. All right. And it's the same with the shadows layer. So you double click here and you change this range to determine how much shadows you want to reveal. So you can expand or contract the area of where the shadows and highlights are visible. All right. Uh, adjust it like this, and again you can then adjust the opacity if you like. 
Okay, and these two layers also have the layer mask. If you wish to remove any specific shadow or highlight, you can simply brush into the layer mask. All right. And the next we got here is the embos uh, folder. So here we got two embos layers. All right, so the difference between these two layers is that the, the first layer is not creating the embos or the shadows and highlights of this folder here, and the second one uh, is creating uh, the embos, including shadows and highlights. And also, this one here is more of the harder embos effect, and this one is a finer embos effect, right? And if you have made any changes here, to the painting, what you need to do is to update these two layers and or sharpening layer as well, but we're going to do that later using the action that is included, all right? So now just to explain you how this layer works, you can change the area's opacity. All right? I'm going to get back to this layer, uh, to these two layers after I finish with uh, other customizing. Okay, so next we are here are the canvas textures. So we got two layers here. And what you can do is you can change the edges opacities to create a different canvas texture look. I'm just gonna keep these layers default. And the next we got is the color looks folder. So as I can mention at the beginning of the video, there are 30 preset color looks that you can choose from, and all you have to do is to select the color look, turn it on, see how it looks, and if you don't like it, simply try with another. And what you can also do is you can combine a few color looks, and that is exactly what I'm going to do in this example, so I'm just gonna turn on this layer here. And then I'm going to turn on this color look right here, and I'm going to change its opacity. Like this, right? And you can actually combine as much color looks as you want. We're gonna turn on this one as well. Okay. All right, so as you can see, you can combine as much color looks as you like and always create uh, some unique color look. Okay, so next we got here is the overall contrast. So how does the contrast is you just change the opacity of this layer. All right, and the next layer we got is the overall brightness. So you double click here. And what you can do is you can use these five sliders to adjust the brightness. This one here is boosting the shadows, this one here is boosting the highlights, this one here is fading and boosting the mid-tones, this one here fades the shadows, and this layer here fades the highlights. Okay, so, I'm just gonna boost and fade the shadows a little bit, okay. And the next we got here is the other vibrance and saturation layer. So when you double click here, you can use these two sliders to adjust the vibrance and saturation. Okay. Just gonna adjust a little bit. These color looks. Okay. And lastly, what we got here is the overall sharpening. So, as I have mentioned, this layer, together with the embossed layers, needs to be updated if you have made any changes like you reveal some detail or remove some detail and other, right? So how to do that is you just 
select the update embers and sharpen regression and click play. But before that, what I'm going to do is, if you wish that this embers effect has a higher intensity, so it's more visible, uh, what you can do is you can increase the visibility of this painting layer to 100%, and then after this action is finished, you can return it back uh, as you have set it uh, in the first place. All right, so I'm just gonna select this action, I'm just gonna click play, all right, and the action is finished, so now I'm just gonna set these layers opacity as it was. So the uh, embos effect and sharpening layers are now uh, updated. So what I'm going to do is just gonna adjust the opacity of these two layers. Just like that. And you can here change the sharpening. I'm gonna leave it default. Okay, so let's just quickly check the before and after. So this is before, and this is the after effect. All right, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Invato profile page. Thanks for watching.